Oh, just about to leave. I really appreciate all the prayers for my trip to Zimbabwe. Nadine's just about to take me to Pittsburgh Station. I'm on my way to Farringdon. From there to Heathrow, I'll try and keep you updated on um, how the trip's going. Okay, all the best. Bye. We're here at Terminal 2, I'm with Wilbert, and uh, we are ready for, to get into our plane to go to Zimbabwe. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, Kevin. I'm looking forward to this trip, and I'm sure it's going to be great fun. Uh, and who brought you? Regina. Yeah, it's right there, under protest. We would have loved you guys to stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you on the other side. Okay? All right, sure. Eh? When you come. Stay travel. Okay, hi Robert. Let's talk a little bit about the trip. Oh yes, yeah. Give me uh, just an update on what we've been doing. This was an exciting uh, trip, Kevin, and um, thanks to you that you have responded to God's calling that you can go on this uh, amazing trip. We started from Harare towards Mrewa. We immediately started meeting, encountering very interesting uh, people and as we stopped on a beautiful river and we met this character Francis of course with his other friends and he was enjoying his beer in the middle of a, a river and he started dancing singing and upon seeing Kevin he thought here is the guy with money and he said to me tell your friend to give me money he has got money this one and I said, no, he doesn't have money. You know, he's white. They have money. He's... Just tell him, tell him, you know. And uh, of course, Kevin was busy, you know, shooting his drone and he was being distracted by that. Uh, but I then tried to engage these guys so that Kevin would have his time. That was beautiful. It, and then we had the tire problem and we stopped at the uh, service station, uh, got our tire fixed and uh, filled our tank with fuel because we were now all heading for a long journey around Zimbabwe. And we headed from Togo. So of course, we found a place to, to stay for the night, which was beautiful. Yes, and no beer is being drunk uh, today at this meal. But in that place, what's interesting there, or rather intimidating for me, who understands uh, what happens in Zimbabwe, there were people preparing for a rally. And so the big shots, you know, those who are, you know, leading the ZANU PF, were meeting in this hotel where we stayed, I guess strategizing on what they would do tomorrow on a rally. And in the morning, we heard people singing, noise, full of people passing the hotel, singing hysterically. And at first Kevin thought these were school children going for a football match or something. But I, I doubted that. And upon a closer look, we realized, no, these were ZANU PF people going for a rally. Uh, we then had to behave and know how to conduct ourselves, not to offend anybody. And um, it worked well. We then went to the DDC's office. We went in there and we were introduced and um, there were some government officials there as well to ensure that we are not there for political reasons. So the questions there were to satisfy themselves that we are innocent and they're on a good mission. So from there, we were led to the field. Where we, now we're seeing the real people. I'm sure that's where Kevin started getting impressed because we went into the villages. Oh my God, that's gonna be so tasty. Oh yeah, get the vegetables they don't need it. Maybe 
the philosophy of no man. Yes, exactly. You can work here. Exactly. Where you could see uh, the poverty that these people have and how much they are doing for themselves to fight this poverty. Even through a model that, that impressed Kevin, you know, a model that could work, these people were actually surviving with very little use or need for money. They produced their food from the fields. So they had their chicken, they had their goats and everything. So if they needed meat, they would have it. If they needed corn, they would have it in their fields. But for corn, because these are, I guess it's because of climate change and what's happening, uh, some parts of this country is having very little rains. So they now have a new method of farming, where they will just dig holes um, instead of plowing the field, disturbing the soil. So yeah. did you dig holes as well in, in here, like you did here? Yeah. Can you show me this? Can you show me? You can show this one to me. Uh, just give me a second. So when they dig holes, they then put manure in there, and, and then plant their seed in there and water the holes. And these will trap the water, and they can actually have a, a very good harvest even with little rains. And one example is um, Mr. Zenzi. Uh, one village where we visited uh, is actually the best farmer in that area who is being used as a model to train and to showcase um, his, his produce and Chris and Aid is helping that um, and, and that's what excited Kevin because that's what he wanted to see. These are the stories he wanted to hear and in this village we were taken around being shown the fields, the chickens, the goats that, that they are doing there. And I was tempted to enjoy the corn right away because it was right from the field. So I bought myself 12 cobs and one of them, I, I roasted it right there and enjoyed it on our way. But I know if you take corn from the field and keep it for days, it, it will go bad. It, it will lose the test. Yeah. So the next hotel, the first thing is I asked them to boil my corn. And we have walked with this, traveled with this corn in the car right around the country. And whenever I feel like enjoying it, I'll just get one and enjoy in the car. From there, we then um, were now heading for Nyanga. Measure something in a bowl for okay. us and give us. Oh, uh, but we, we don't. Um, can we be sure of the quality? We, we're not going to say why we have to do this, Robert. <laughs> we're not going to confess. You know, we won't. Or we just we might uh, pretend we are good mechanics. That's right. Okay. Uh, the road that we used was taking us to the border, Nyamapanda border. And when we got to the border, we kind of wondered how we were going to get to Nyanga. And we had to ask somebody for, for, for the road because we were not s seeing it. But there was just a dust road uh, behind us, which was going into the bushes. And the young man said, that's the road you need to take. A skeptical about that, we just had to trust and believe him. And, and Kevin drove into that road. Uh, but before we went far, we started seeing signs, the way of landmines, the way of landmines. And these signs were 
lit were all over the road right through as we drove. We became a bit nervous. I said where the landmines came from. The landmines um, were planted by the Eurasian soldiers to try and keep the guerrilla fighters um, in Mozambique. Mm -hmm. we are Mozambique. So this mountain is Mozambique. Mm. Huh. Yeah. So that whole jungle was littered with landmines. So if the liberation fighters tried to cross into Zimbabwe, they would be killed there. Huh? And the consequence was it was terrible because there was no care about what this is going to do to the ordinary people in that area who are still afraid now, which is why this exercise of uh, demining that area is going on right now. And is the more mines the sun? There's a fair on that this side here. We must be very careful if we move inside here to the bush. So there's plenty of plenty of mines still. Mm. And if those people, they don't want their eyes to be open. And what about your cows then? Mm. Just keep them away? Cows, we must protect them. If they go, we must check them. I might be very careful. But mm. for our sake, we had to stop and ask two boys that we saw whether we were really safe to continue driving in this road. It was just going al along the border of Zimbabwe and Mozambique. And the young men told us to not to be afraid. The road itself had already been demined, uh, but we were not supposed to go onto the Mozambican side of it because there were still landmines there. So we proceeded to Nyanga. We got there in the evening and we, of course, were very tired. The, the trip was long and then got into a hotel, Trotbegi, um, looking for a place to stay. And the hotel was full. We didn't know. So we had to look for alternatives. We proceeded to Montclair Casino Hotel, where fortunately we found a room. Nyanga is the most beautiful part of Zimbabwe, the Eastern Islands. And, and Kevin, that's when I realized he's addicted to filmmaking, taking pictures and, and videos, and he was lost in that. You know, getting beautiful pictures. We then went to, to the Yangombe Falls. And that was another magnificent sight. Uh, we got to the falls and Kevin again was drowned into his, you know, video taking and then pictures. And, and uh, we then met some friends who were also visiting. The very people who were, who were filling up um, the Trondbeck Inn, now they had finished their business and they were going. So they just came to catch a, a glimpse of the falls. And then from there we went to uh, the World View, a very high point where, from where you can literally see Zimbabwe. And, and um, we took some pictures then. It was it was evening. We drove back to the hotel, so, and then in the hotel it was getting cold. The temperatures had dropped, and upon the world's view, it had dropped to five degrees, and we were feeling the cold. So when we got to the hotel, fortunately, there was a fire going in the hotel and we had to pick the best spot to sit. So Kevin and I pulled our chairs and sit, you know, in front of a fire and warmed ourselves there. 
and and then we had a drink there after after our dinner then we we retired to bed and then the next day we went to mutare uh, again um we got to mutare very well the journey started very very well we were taken to the government offices again to be vetted because the government needed to know who we are, what was our mission. We were taken into their high offices, a bit intimidating because we were actually meeting these um, police chefs and uh, some the CIOs and stuff like that. And the gentlemen in suits who would have been the big chefs. And so we went into the office and had our interviews there. And uh, it so happened that the big chef was there to actually satisfy himself was wearing a purple shirt. And the moment they started calling us bishops and everything, and, and Kevin did this, this way of breaking the, 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 the tension, and he said, ah, well, you're calling us bishops, but as far as I know, um, bishops wear purple. And in this room, there's only one bishop who happens to be the chef who was sitting in front of us. That made them laugh. They did not threaten us as much as we thought. Then we went to the DDC's office. And these are representatives of government offices in different um, districts. And they, these are the president's office. So the face of the president is in these little places. And what, what was worrying is these are the places where we had to feel their power because we, we got there and we nobody welcomed us in and the girl who was you know walking with us uh, went in to tell them that we had arrived but they were busy in a meeting so we waited outside and I was surprised that Pe Kevin is so patient uh, I thought he was going as an Englishman you know conscious of time I thought he was going to freak out to say, we've been here now two hours. These people are keeping us waiting. Let's... But he was very patient, you know, he, had, he was ready to wait even all day. We, we actually, after waiting for two hours, we had an emergency that we had to deal with. Still with no idea if these people were going to call us in or we were going to stay the whole day. So it was better for us to deal with an emergency. We needed internet, so we went to the hotel to, to sort out our problem. And it means in Malange, the mission for that day was aborted because there was no more time for us to drive to Malange district and do what needed to be done. Uh, but thank God we had Selina. So she filled us in, in terms of the projects that are taking place in Malange, even though we're not able to go there ourselves. But Selina had it at, the, at her fingertips. And then next, uh, from there, the next morning, we, we headed for Murambinda, uh, Buhera district. And again, we were welcomed with uh, this wonderful young man, Gianni. Here we are at the pump, and the clinic is up there, about 400 meters from here. And Gianni, um, took us again to the DDC's office. We, we had to be vetted again. The president needed to know what we were doing in that region if we were not uh, peddling the regime change agenda. So in that office again, interestingly, there wasn't much business going on there, but we were still kept outside. Supposedly for us to feel their power, again, they knew where uh, to the simple reverence were there on a you know good mission. So Gianni took us now to the field. And this was a clinic supported by Tristan Aid again uh, with Medra, you know, a Methodist run organization. And the clinic, um, at the clinic they are doing amazing things. They have a, a borehole, solar powered bowl which is now supplying water into the clinic. They also have a maternity ward, which was very difficult um, at the beginning because it is again a dry prone area where there's no much rains. But with the borehole, the functions of the clinic have been facilitated and there's also um, 
vegetable garden, a nutritious garden that they are having there because they have water and it's doing brilliantly. And after all this, um, God led us uh, very well. And then we crowned it all at the Great Zimbabwe. Where, again, Kevin really needed the beautiful pictures of the Great Zimbabwe. And we, we felt there, you can actually feel the presence um, of God and the spirits uh, of the area. And we chose to to have a prayer there. And we prayed at, at the Great Zimbabwe, you know, thanking God for how he, has, he led us through this mission, which went very, very well. But when we were approaching the Great Zimbabwe, uh, it was misty and cloudy, and, and I was a bit disappointed, but not Kevin. Kevin looked, you know, or rather he turned the problem into an opportunity. He said, no, this is beautiful. Maybe I'm going to be the first time to film and to take pictures when it's misty like this. Oh, everyone would, la would like to do it with some bit of light, but I'm different. I'm going to do it in the mist. And he did it. We climbed the mountain, the highest point of the Great Zimbabwe, uh, which was a tall order. By the time we got there, our legs were burning, and then we rested there and, and filmed to pictures and everything, and then climbed down uh, to the great enclosure, which is where we had our prayers, a very beautiful and peaceful place to do that. And uh, so now we're done, we're heading back to Harare. I thank you so much for telling us the story. Okay, okay bye-bye now. Yeah, I'm going to make it.